Welcome to Tail Rotor Basics Part 2. In this video, we're not going to talk much about radios. There's too many of them. And they're all different. And it's beyond the scope of this video. What I want to do is help you understand what's happening when you change the gain on your radio. And what you should see when you do change it. If you understand that, you're well on your way to understanding tail rotor gain. Thanks, Mickey. Why don't you go ahead and explain this for us? Well, Ron, this is a concept of radio control, and it doesn't matter if it's a 18MZ or a DX6I. When you move the uh, rudder stick or flip a switch or turn a dial, the transmitter generates a signal of a certain width in time, uh, microseconds, and it sends it out to the receiver, and the receiver passes it along to whatever's hooked to that particular channel. And in this case, it's going to a gyro, and the gyro is going to take that signal and process it depending on how the helicopter's pirouetting or what forces are acting on it and it's going to change the signal and then send it to the rudder servo and it's in microseconds and that's what that's the language the servo understands so as soon as it gets to the rudder servo the rudder servo will move to a predetermined position this happens anywhere from 50 to 600 times per second depending on your system okay ron you move the gyro and i'll tell them what's happening now here is rate mode at 0%. There's no gain, so it's not doing anything. That's no surprise. It doesn't look like 10% does much either. It doesn't move just a little bit. Ah, 50%. That's better. It's moving. It's moving farther and faster. Ooh, 100%. It moves really fast and really far but it always snaps back to center. That's because it's in rate mode. Now let's take a look at heading hold mode. And the whole idea of this is you change the gain in your radio, you can verify it using the gyro. So at 10%, we don't expect to see much activity. And sure enough, there's not much there at all. But if we increase the gain to 50%, we would expect to see quite a bit more activity. And sure enough, it moves a lot more. So when we're troubleshooting the gyro, if we increase the gain and we don't see an increase, we know something's wrong. So here at 100%, it's really fast and it's moving really far. And in heading hold mode, it doesn't snap back to center. Now I'll show you how to tell if you're in heading hold or rate mode. In heading hold mode, when you put the tail rotor somewhere, it just stays. If it starts drifting, we're going to talk about that later. But when you put it in rate mode, it should snap back to the center. Every time. In rate mode, your blade should have a little bit of right rudder, and make sure it's right rudder. It's just enough so you can let go of the rudder stick in rate mode, and the helicopter doesn't yaw. You just adjust the length of the tail rotor control rod until you get about this angle. Anybody that tells you different, full of mouse poop. Now that we have the tail rotor control rod adjusted, let's go ahead and set the gain in heading hold mode, and that's where it's going to be most of the time. So you probably won't have to go back into rate mode again. Well, at least until you crash. Go ahead in your transmitter and set your gain at about 50% and then fly your machine. And bump the gain up a few points at a time until it starts to hunt. Now I'm going to show you what hunting looks like. See how fast it's going back and forth? It's fast and it makes a noise. That's not a wag, that's a hunt. Once it starts to hunt, go ahead and lower your gain a couple points until it stops hunting. That's your maximum gain. You'll never run it higher than that. More than likely, when you go into idle up, you'll want the gain to run a little lower, but it'll never be higher than this value. Now let's do some fine tuning and troubleshooting. If your helicopter pirouettes too fast, just reduce the travel or the endpoints on your rudder channel. If the rudder's too sensitive, add some expo to the rudder channel. Some gyros need up to 80%, but start out at about 20 and work your way up. Now remember, JR is positive expo, and Fataba is negative expo. Now for some trouble shooting. The problem is my nose keeps moving the same way all the time. Watch your tail slider, and if it drifts to one side, guess what that's called? That's right, it's known as drift. It's usually caused by moving your rudder trim, or vibration, or a big temperature change. Most of the newer gyros should never be trimmed, but we never say never, because some of the really old gyros do require a click or two every once in a while. 
For the most part, you should never hit the trim button on your rudder. Now, all gyros are sensitive to vibration. If the drift is caused by vibration, try a different type of tape or relocate the gyro sensor to another place on your model. Most old, really old, piezo gyros don't like to be hard mounted or strapped down. The new ones do. If it's caused by temperature, and you're flying on a real hot day or a cold day, give the model about 20 minutes to acclimate. Problem is, my servo gets really hot. It's normal for the servo to be warm, but if it's hot, your gain might be too high. Just because you can run a high gain doesn't mean you have to. Set the gain just high enough to get the job done. Running the gain too high can also lead to strip gears and excessive wear on other tail components. Also, check to make sure your servo's set up properly. Running at the wrong frequency or running an analog servo in digital mode can cause big problems. Be sure you aren't feeding the servos too much voltage. Too much voltage will make the servos hot and it could lead to early failure. So be sure you have the right voltage. Problem is, I have a lot of travel in one direction but hardly any in the other direction. Make sure the rudder servo arm is absolutely square to the control rod when you're in rate mode. Trim should be centered and sub trim should be zero. Use a wheel and a drill a hole if you have to, but get it right. And be sure you're in rate mode. Reset your travel limits if you can. Most modern gyros have this feature. If you have a dial, only worry about the limit for right rudder. And last but not least, and this is a big one, you change the gain and nothing happens. Remember this? I can't tell you how to work each radio. So make sure your gain wire is plugged in the right channel and the signal wire is oriented just like the servos. Try inhibiting the gyro. Set channel 5 to gear and use travel adjust to set the gain. Or... JR and Spectrum sometimes require you use AUX2 for the gyro. Disable the gyro function and set AUX2 to AUX2. Then use travel adjust to change the gain. Now, this is really basic. You want to study your manual and get to know your radio. That'll get you started. Study the manual. Play around with your radio. Don't be afraid to experiment. Most people only need one gain. But if you need more, most radios are capable. And if you can't just get it, give me a call. Oh yeah, and I'd appreciate it if you'd buy your heli stuff from Ron's. Every time you buy something, I get a piece of cheese. Thanks, Mickey. I'll have to get a big stockpile of cheese. I appreciate you guys watching this video. And seriously, if you have any questions, give me a call.